Hey everybody! So I have been checking out a lot of the Excel tutorials out there lately for dashboards and I've noticed this consistent pattern across almost all of them. Uh, and it's that they're kind of four core skills. People have different takes on them, they focus on different elements, but it's five core skills and those five core skills are kind of the same across all of them. Uh, so I want to give you a breakdown of those skills and I want to kind of give you the framework you need to understand what you need to learn to start building your own dashboards. And I think also this will help encourage you and make you understand that you probably have more of the skills already than you would expect. So let's just jump right into it. The biggest, most important thing here is understanding that you need a clean table to start with. When I say that a clean table, what I mean is you need data that's formatted in such a way that you have a single header and that each column is consistent, formatted consistently, the values are, are, are consistent, um, and that each cell has a part one particular value in it. So what I, what I use as a reference for this is fancy tables. Don't do fancy tables. <laughs> so here's a fancy table as an example. <laughs> a fancy table is something like this, two headers, data segmented in weird ways across the table. This is not gonna work well for a dashboard and you're gonna have to reformat the thing to look more like our example that you saw before, this raw data example. Uh, this is will very quickly teach you why you hear folks that work in uh, data fields complain so much about how 80% of their time is spent formatting and 20% of it is spent building anything. <laughs> All right, next big one is uh, pivot tables and pivot charts. If you have used pivot tables and pivot charts before, uh, you'll be familiar with this. If you haven't, it's okay. Uh, go check out the thousands of tutorials on YouTube to learn how to do this. I will just show you uh, how I do it really quickly, um, but uh, there's many great tutorials out there for free. So the principle here is we have a table. Our table has been named something. We've named it sales in this example. So when we go to the insert tab, we can hit pivot table and reference our clean table that we put in before. In this case, I named it sales, <laughs> not super descriptive there, uh, and drop in uh, whatever we want. Let's say order date and uh, let's say sales, and it will generate this nice little table for us. Now the table's great, but what we're gonna be using even more of in this case is uh, pivot charts. So if we go to insert, and instead of doing pivot table, we go right over to the right to pivot chart. We do the same thing, reference our table and drop in our date, uh, in this case, order date, and let's do sales, and or let's do profit in this case, why not? Um, now this is cool. So this has just generated a chart for us, and this chart is part of the pivot table. As the pivot table updates, the pivot chart will update to reflect that. Now, this is gonna be critically important as we get into making this dashboard interactive and filterable. Uh, the only thing, I'm not gonna to go too deep on this because like I said, there's a million tutorials on YouTube. The only thing I'm gonna say here is when you insert a chart, the important thing that you need to understand is that it will default to a bar chart most of the time and that you can go to change chart under the, when you select your table, go to the design tab, hit change chart type, and you can change your chart type to whatever chart type you want. That's the critical skill you need to have. Okay, so now you've got your pivot charts, you've got pivot tables, you're in pretty good shape here. Uh, what do you need to think about next? The next thing is breaking out of the grid layout. So when you see a dashboard like this, you go, wow, that's crazy. How did you build that in Excel? That's what I, the reaction I get a lot. And it's really simple. Excel has a lot of the same core features as PowerPoint. And what I mean by that is you can insert shapes, insert images, insert metrics, and layer them on top of each other to create cool templates like the one you see here. So here in this example, we've got a base layer that has our background on top of that, each section is layered. And then on top of that, the charts, metrics, etc. So when you, when you see something like this, people I think get a little, um, they get a little intimidated, <laughs> but the underlying principle is really simple. We've got shapes that we can insert we can style those shapes just like we do in PowerPoint. And then we can add our metrics on top. And this is the big key skill here, the one big takeaway I give people. Insert your text box or a rectangle, either one, and then format it once it's in there. Right click it, you can go to format shape. 
format it so that it has no fill and no line. That will just make it transparent so you can't see the rectangle. Then, with the rectangle selected, go to your formula bar, hit equals, navigate over to whatever metric you want to be included in that text box, click it, and then hit enter. And what's going to happen is this rectangle is then going to include the value from the cell that you referenced. And when you change that cell, this value will change to reflect that cell. Why is this better than being in a grid? Well, if you keep all your data in a grid, like you see in any of these tables here, it's really hard to format it. It's really hard to do complex designs. You can't move them around. They're stuck in one place. It's just really difficult. But when you get it into a box like this so you can move it around, it enables you to start to kind of do more complex designs. It allows you to put text in specific places, layer it on top of things. It gives you all that freedom you need to, to make something that really looks like a dashboard. So remember that trick. Transparent rectangle, formula bar, equals, select your reference cell, enter, and then you can format your text. And for context here, you just format it using the same text formatting area you use everywhere else. We can change our colors, we can change our styles, do all of that right here. So this leads right into the next skill, which is using design elements. So I just wanna go a little deeper into these shapes that you saw in the background. I call this the foundation of a dashboard. Doing this is, like I said, not as difficult as you think. We've layered rectangles together. So I'm going to go back to that view we were looking at a second ago, where we see everything in the dashboard. And I just want to use this as a reference. So I've started with a background color. In this case, I wanted a gradient. So I couldn't just change the cell formatting. I had to actually insert a shape with the gradient I want. On top of that, I've added a white box. That white box is what you see right here. You see this big box. Then on top of that, I added some gray boxes. And then on top of that, white boxes. And then on top of that, some cool green colored boxes. That's it. It's just shapes layered on top of each other, just like a PowerPoint slide. Uh, learning how to use the formatting options in here is not, as, not very hard, very similar to PowerPoint. You absolutely have the skills to do this. Um, one of the only difficult parts of this is just making things organized, right? I like to keep my boxes consistent sizes. I like to keep my spacing even. And you can use options like alignment tools here to do that. So if we look on the upper uh, right hand side with multiple shapes selected, under shape format we get the ability to align left, align right, align center, space things out evenly by distributing them. Uh, it's worth exploring this menu up here. Again, under shape format you'll see all of these options just to get things organized. So focus on organization, layer up shapes, experiment with this a little bit to get used to it, but you'll find that it's very similar to PowerPoint and you've probably got most of the skills you need to do it already. Um, only other big thing I would talk about in terms of design skills or design element skills is learning how to format charts. I don't know why we don't teach people more about this when we teach, teach Excel, um, but if you select a chart, go to uh, the design uh, option when the chart's selected. You'll see up here that you have the ability to add chart elements. So first thing, first exercise I suggest you do is try adding each element and seeing what it does just so you know what these are. And then once you've got each element added, I want you to go in and click it, select it, and look at the formatting options here. And if you're having trouble getting into a menu where you can see formatting options, under the chart elements, you'll see that there's more access options, more title options, more data label options. At the bottom of each of these, there's an option to get into the formatting pane. But I want you to get into this formatting pane and try changing the colors of different things. So if I want to change my line color, I go to my line. If I want to change the marker color, I go to marker. Now let's change this as well. And you can start to play with things. You, you, and it's not just colors that you can change here, right? You can also go in, you can look at the series options, look at how you plot things. If you're clicking into an axis, you can look at how to change the axis bounds and the units and all these other things. So just take some time to get familiarized with all of the options that are available to you here. And it'll go a long way to help you get charts that actually match your overall design. 
Um, one big tip I give people is when you're getting, when you first add a chart in, the first thing I always do is I make it no fill and no line so I have a transparent background. That just makes it much easier to layer it on top of our foundational shapes that we put behind it. It lends itself to cleaner, more organized design as well. Um, but everything else just experiment with. And you'll be surprised, you probably have most of those skills already if you've ever had to edit a chart before. But take a little bit of time to go a little farther and learn each of the elements and what your formatting options are for each of the elements. Last but not least, slicers and timelines. So if you look at this chart, you see I can click things, all the data updates dynamically, really nifty, right? Super cool. So this is just a additional feature on pivot charts and pivot tables. If you click into a pivot table, you have the option to insert a uh, under, excuse me, under the insert part, when you're clicked in, you go to pivot table, analyze, uh, and you will see insert slicer. And this is a filter. So let's say we want to filter in this case by segment, we can click into segment, hit okay. And we get the, we get a slicer. Uh, if we want to add a timeline, same thing, pivot chart, analyze, insert timeline, and then select whatever date you're using for the timeline. A timeline is just a date selector. So pretty easy to add them. Let me go back and show you how they look in practice here. Once you've added them, just one thing you'll need to do is you'll need to right click, you'll need to hit report connections, and you'll need to make sure it's connected to all of the tables and all of the charts in your dashboard. Once it's connected, when you start selecting things, it'll dynamically filter. Um, it's just an incredibly useful, powerful tool, and it takes us not just from having a cool collection of charts and metrics, but instead having an interactive dynamic dashboard that can be used for more complex analysis, right? If this dashboard just showed every single region, that would be useful, but it's not nearly as useful as then being able to drill down into specific regions and start comparing them to each other or comparing them to performance as a whole. This is kind of, to me, what takes something from just an exploratory data tool like Excel typically is used to something that's a little more like a BI tool, right? It lets you use Excel for the kind of analysis and visualization that you might use a more expensive BI tool for. And sometimes you don't have access to that more expensive BI tool, you have to use Excel. So it's worth learning some of these features. Anyway, that's the big take home uh, message here, which is you can build something really powerful in Excel using skills that you probably have already. Most of these you probably have already. Learning any of these is not going to take you too long. It might take you an hour for each of these skills that I've listed to get up to speed. Creating big beautiful designs like this, that might be a little bit more of a challenge for you if you're not a designer, but even this is something that you can you can um, borrow from other design elements in your business. Maybe you have a PowerPoint slide with a cool template already. You can start with that so that you have a base design to work with instead of starting from scratch and building a big old custom, you know, dashboard design like this. Um, but PowerPoint slides are a great place to get base colors, uh, base layouts, font styles, all that kind of stuff. And can get you a lot of the way there without having to really have any underlying design skills yourself. So anyway, I hope that helps everyone. I hope it gets you up to speed, helps you kind of hone in and focus on what skills you need to develop and work on. Thanks so much for tuning in and have a good one.